Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is, what is it today? Thursday, November 4th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, uh, today is uh, Patrick Case's birthday. Happy birthday, Patrick. We love you very much. I, it's hard for me to imagine that there's a more beloved person in our congregation than Patrick. Uh, we love you very much. We're so glad you're part of our our, our fellowship, and uh, we love you. And we hope that you have a great birthday today, that you're surrounded by the love of your family and friends, and you know that you are loved by your church and, of course, by your Jesus. Today for Hindus is Diwali. Diwali is their festival of lights. It's, one, it's their most uh, popular, most sacred holiday. And uh, it'll start today and it lasts for the next five days. I actually was in India once for uh, during Diwali. It was pretty exciting. Um, and uh, I, so to our Hindu friends, I wish you a happy, happy time during this time. I hope that uh, your love of the Festival of Lights will point you to the Father of Lights, which is uh, the Lord God, uh, who sent his son Jesus into the world to be the light of the world. Um, so on Sunday, I preached out of Zechariah chapter 9, Zechariah chapter 9, and it's got the famous passage in it uh, about the Messiah coming riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Um, remember that chapter 9 talks about how do you recognize the true Messiah, the true Savior, um, and uh, it starts off by talking about all these false saviors, these false uh things that do not say uh, wisdom is one of them and riches is another pride was the third and pride specifically as it was uh, manifested in the in the in the form of idolatry well um now that those have been discussed uh, zechariah uh, the prophecy of zechariah turns to talking about the true messiah who rides into jerusalem Righteous and having salvation is he, it says, uh, humble and mounted on a donkey. This idea of the Messiah coming in humility is, uh, was a world-rocking idea uh, for the Jews. And so, so in, in a lot of ways, I think that they uh, ignored that uh, criteria for the Messiah. It's here in Zechariah. It's an important thing. Um, but the other Messianic candidates who came prior to Jesus and even after Jesus, they, uh, they did not come in the sort of humility that Jesus came in. They came uh, trying to gather together their troops to fight the war against the Romans. And, uh, and that was the sort of leader that the people were interested in following. Um, it was a much different story when Jesus came humble and riding into town on a donkey, not having to fight for his supremacy, just knowing that he was sovereign. Um, the humility of a leader. And I've been thinking about that uh, a lot lately, um, this idea that, that, that Christian leaders, those who, those who follow Jesus, must walk in the same humility that Jesus walked in. Um, I was thinking about the, the criteria that the book of uh, 1 Timothy gives for, for leadership in the church. Um, and I think a lot of these criteria go back to humility, right? The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task, the Apostle Paul writes. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Right? Uh, not a recent convert or else he will become puffed up with conceit. 
prideful, right? There must be humility there. And I think humility shows through in the other aspects, other criteria for leadership as well. Um, husband of one wife, right? Uh, that re it requires humility, I think, to stay married over the over a long period of time. <laughs> you need to humble yourself, uh, able to teach. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, self-controlled, right? Sober-minded, um, not believing yourself to be above uh, the need for 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 careful restraint in your life. Uh, it's when we become prideful. It's when when we when we cease being humble that we feel that uh, that we can handle, we can control uh, the the substances that uh, could control us, right? I'm not, I don't have problems with drinking. I can, I can stop whenever I want. Well, no, right? Uh, Sober-minded, self-controlled, uh, taking steps to make sure that you don't fall off the wagon. Uh, respectable, hospitable, uh, well, welcoming people into your home. And Christian hospitality, uh, always involves humility, treating everyone as if they are worthy of your respect uh, and, and welcome into your home. Able to teach, I think teaching, uh, good teaching requires humility, although, you know, we're often attracted to teachers who are not humble. Um, but I think teachers who are humble have uh, the ability to communicate uh, the, the truth of God without making other people feel stupid or foolish. Um, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome. Yeah, man, anger is a key indicator that pride is off the rails in your life. Uh, because we, we become angry when we believe that our rights have been violated. We become angry when we believe other people are not doing what we deserve for them to do. And so anger comes from uh from feeling as though we've been unjustly treated. We have not received what we deserve. And humility breaks the power of anger. Humility says, uh, I recognize that I deserve condemnation from Jesus. I deserve uh, the death penalty. And it's only because of the grace of God that I'm saved. Humility recognizes the other person as just as much uh, a, per, uh, a child of God as you. Humility recognizes the other person as having supreme value and worth. Uh, so humility uh, listens to other people rather than gets angry with them. Uh, there's so many stories out in the media about angry pastors, uh, angry church leaders who use their anger as a, as a tool to abuse their congregations and their, and their fellow leaders. And that's a sign of pride. Uh, it's, an, it's a, a key danger sign of pride. Um, we need to be humble leaders. Um, we need to look for humble leaders. And I, you know, I, I, uh, I feel like a broken record sometimes saying this, but it's every day that I come across evidence of the danger and the destruction that pride-filled leaders uh, can can wreck in the life of a church and in the life of a community. Um, so, yeah, uh, humility. Jesus came humble, right? He was born in a stable uh, rather than in a in a, a, a palace. He was born uh, he was born into a family that needed to flee uh, as immigrants into Egypt. He was born, refugees. Jesus lived a humble life of a, of a carpenter uh, growing up uh, when he uh, was old enough to do ministry where the Bible says he had no stately form, he had no majesty that we should be drawn to him. He just came humble. He, he set aside his glory to come and, uh, and, and serve us. Jesus told his disciples, I have come among you as one who serves and so you must serve others. Jesus set the supreme example of humility when he died on a cross on our behalf, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus did not retaliate. Jesus did not respond in anger. Uh, Jesus was humble, and Jesus allowed uh, God's will to be done in his life and actively pursued it to be done. Uh, God help us. We need leaders like that. Um, and I, I, I look at my own life and I recognize, uh, I recognize ways in which I'm, I'm fulfilling this and I recognize ways in which I fall short. 
And uh, God, help me to be that kind of leader. And I, I would urge you to pray that same prayer. God, help me to be humble. Uh, because this world needs humble people who are willing to uh, set their own rights aside in order to fulfill the, the work of God. Um, yeah, this is so much on my heart lately. And uh, I just, I pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this passage, which talks about uh, the importance of humble leadership and uh, that the Messiah himself would be the paradigm of humble leadership. Uh, and we as earthly leaders, how can we take any other model for ourselves than the humble Messiah King? Forgive us, Lord, when we fall short. Help mature us into the people who can can walk this humility out and may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I lift up Patrick Case to you. I thank you for him. What a wonderful man who's willing to use his gifts to serve others. I pray that you bless him, encourage him, strengthen him. Lord, I pray that he would know today that he is loved by his church and by you. Uh, Lord, I lift up our, our Hindu friends uh, celebrating Diwali, the, the festival of lights. Lord, I do pray that you would open their eyes so they might see the light of the world, Jesus Christ, and follow him in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, and 180 Youth Group. I forgot to say that. 180 Youth Group tonight at 630. I'm a little preoccupied. God bless you. Uh, thanks for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.